there is exactly one x in the interval from 0 to pi over 2, such that tangent squared of x over 2 times cotangent of x to the fourth plus 1 times cosecant squared of x plus tangent squared of x is 1. We wish to find the positive integer k such that cosine of x raised to 2019th power is the sine of x raised to kth power. And at first glance, this problem looks very difficult. You know, you have this crazy equation. We have tangent of x over 2, cotangent of x to the fourth power, and it seems like we cannot apply any trigonometry identity right away to cotangent of x to the fourth plus 1 or cosecant squared of x plus tangent squared of x. So how do we begin? Well, it turns out this problem is much easier in some sense than it looks because you can actually finish this problem using straightforward bashing. By bashing, I'm saying that you can express everything in terms of cosines and sines, algebraically manipulate the equation multiple times, and you're going to find your answer. And for this particular problem, it's not going to take you too long until you get to an expression similar to this one. But of course, there is another method, a more elegant method, of approaching this question, although it is not substantially faster. And that's to realize that this equality is a special case. It's actually the equality case of cauchy schwartz inequality. And in this video, we will take a look at both methods. But before we begin, let's take this time to recognize Rishab Gupta, who was the very first person to correctly answer this question last week. A huge shout out to Rishabh Gupta. Now, turning our attention back to the problem, let's start with a straightforward bashing. Realize that we want to find a relationship between cosine and sine, so it seems reasonable to express the equation in terms of cosine and sine and see what we can make out of it. Well, we gotta write tangent of x over 2 in terms of cosine and sine, but there are many famous ways of doing so. For example, sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x, and 1 minus cosine of x over sine of x immediately comes to my mind. Since we're dividing by sine of x to the fourth and sine of x squared in the denominator, let's use sine of x over 1 plus cosine x, so sine of x's can cancel out. So let's begin. I will write sine of x as s and cosine of x as a c to make the writing more compact and easier to read. So we have tangent squared of x over 2, which is s squared over 1 plus cosine, 1 plus c, I meant to say, 1 plus c squared, we're just squaring that, times cotangent to the fourth of x, that's c to the fourth over s to the fourth plus 1, times 1 over s squared plus s squared over c squared is 1. Let's go down. Just so we're not working with fractions, let's multiply by s to the fourth. So we have this thing going away, and we have s to the fourth right here. And then let's multiply by 1 plus c squared. So this denominator goes away as well. And let's finally, we know this s squared is going to cancel out with this s squared. So we only have to care about c squared. So let's multiply by c squared to both sides. So this thing goes away, and we have c squared on top. So this gets us. We have c to the fourth plus s to the fourth times s squared times this thing, which is c squared plus s to the fourth is s to the fourth c squared times 1 plus c quantity squared. And now we can expand c to the sixth plus s to the fourth c squared plus c to the fourth s to the fourth plus s to the eighth. And on the right side, we have s to the fourth c squared times 1 plus 2c plus c squared, which is s to the fourth c squared plus, I'm just distributing this, 2s to the fourth c cubed plus s to the fourth c to the fourth. And right away, we see s to the fourth c squared cancel out, c to the fourth s to the fourth cancel out. So we have a c to the sixth plus s to the eighth is a 2s to the fourth c cubed. And we recognize this as a perfect square because once we move this over to the left side, we get c cubed minus s to the fourth squared factoring this. 
and this implies a c cubed is s to the fourth. Now we are basically done because we wish to find the cosine of 2019 x being equal to sine of x to the k power. So we just gotta make the exponent of cosine 2019 and to do so, so we right now have cosine cubed of x and sine to the fourth of x. We want to change this to 2019's power and the 2019 divided by 3 is 673. So we simply raise both sides by 673rd power, getting us cosine of x to the 2019's power is a sine of x to the 2692 power. So we know our final answer is a 2692. So that's one way of finishing the problem. Let's quickly cover the second way, which is using the equality case of cauchy short inequality. But for us to apply that, we first have to know what cauchy short inequality is for the case of real numbers in this problem. And the cauchy short inequality states that given real numbers x1, x2, and so on, and y1, y2, all the way to yn, we know this product given right here is greater than or equal to x1, y1 plus x2, y2 all the way to xn, yn squared. So we are essentially taking the dot product or inner product in the real vector space of the vector x1, x2 all the way to xn and y1, y2 all the way to yn. And the hint that we may be able to apply cauchy short inequality is when we are squaring items and adding them up or when we are multiplying items and adding them and squaring them. And if you look at our problem, we actually have a bunch of sum of squares given right here. We have cosine squared of x squared. This is 1 squared. And we have cosecant squared tangent squared. And we even have this expression all raised to the second power. So you may think of using this inequality, but you may ask, we, are, we don't have inequality. Why would we care about this? Well, it turns out you have equality if and only if x1 over y1 is equal to x2 over y2 all the way xn over yn when the vectors are constant multiples of each other. So if we can prove that our statement, our problem statement, is an equality case of cauchy short inequality, we right away have this information available that this inner relationship between x1s and y1s. So let's actually apply it. So in our case, we have a cotangent fourth of x plus 1 times, I write it as tangent squared of x plus cosecant squared of x. And we know this thing is equal to tangent squared of x over 2. And we know this thing is equal to cotangent squared of x over 2, moving this over to the other side. And just applying cauchy short inequality now, we know this thing is going to be greater than or equal to x1, y1 plus x2, y2. In our case, x1 is cotangent squared of x. Our y1 is a tangent of x plus our x2, y2. x2 is 1, y2 is cosecant of x. That's cotangent of x plus cosecant of x squared or cosine of x over sine of x plus 1 over sine of x squared and that's cosine of x plus 1 over sine of x squared. But we know, we know sine of x, we know sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x is a tangent of x over 2. So what we have is a reciprocal of that, or cotangent of x over 2 being squared. And this establishes that we actually have the equality case in cauchy short inequality. And that's telling us that x1 over y1 is equal to x2 over y2. So we know cotangent squared of x over tangent of x is equal to 1 over cosecant of x, x1 over y1 being x2 over y2. And this right away gets us cotangent cubed of x is equal to sine of x, simplifying the left and the right hand side or cosine cubed of x over sine cubed of x is a sine x. Also, cosine cubed of x is a sine of x to the fourth. 
and we have arrived at the same point with a little less work. Anyway, our final answer to this question, to this problem, is 2692.